interview with a member of staff from CGL Inspire East Lanks. This week, myself and my colleagues, Usher, are going, to are going to be interviewing Andy Toynton, who is our BRIC coordinator. So I'll introduce myself. I'm Nina Cole. I'm a service user involvement volunteer based at Accrington Inspire. Zush? Hi, I'm Zusha Ramboski. Um, I'm a service user rep for Burnley Inspire. And Andy? I'm getting interviewed. <laughs> 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 I'm Andy Toynton. I'm the... Uh, Building Recovery and Community Coordinator for Inspire East Lang. Thanks, Andy. So we've got a series of questions for you. Um, if you can answer them as honestly as you can. So who is Andy to start with and what in the world is a BRIC coordinator? I feel like I'm at a job interview. I work well in teams. I work on my own. <laughs> what, what in the world is a, a BRIC coordinator? Good question. Um, good question. Um, you thought they would have given me an easy job title, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, right, so basically building recovery in communities. That's what the job title is, but it's got different elements to it. I would say, and I've always held this since day one, um, one of my main roles is to break down the stigma of the recovery in the community. Yeah, that's where I'm doing any work that runs throughout it. That could be, may, well, mainly on an organisational level when I'm linking in with other organisations, when I'm trying to promote recovery, when I'm trying to work in community centres or setting up groups. Um, and also in the private sector as well. When we've done, we used to have an exercise on prescription scheme running many years ago. Well, only last year, actually. Um, and where we were approaching different gyms and saying, we've got this scheme, we want to... Bring, you know, we want our service users to come and use your gym. Um, and that, that in itself, with the gyms that we work with, has done a massive job to breaking down that stigma. So that, and it, so that runs all throughout, and it's with different community centres, any groups that we're on. <clears throat> the other part of it is what I inherited from when I was a, an academy coordinator, is about coordinating the activities um, to, in order to spot people's recovery capital. Recovery capital. Um, now, it's either running the groups ourselves, because it's not just me, uh, there is a brick team. Um, we may be a bit parted at the moment because of COVID, um, but we, it's not just me that runs this stuff. So it's the activities that we would run, another organisation. Um, so we work quite closely with Active Lancashire, uh, CSI. We do a lot of work with them. So, um, and we also work very closely with Red Rose Recovery as well. So we do a lot of different, there's a lot of crossover there. Um, and we, we were putting an activity program together, which we've run for a couple of years. And we're going to restart that um, for autumn. So there'll be like a couple of pages in it. I'll have a timetable with what Red Rose do, what would we do, uh, and what we're active Lancashire. So people can have a look at that and pick and choose. So... Second part of the question was what coordinating activities. Uh, another key element of my job is um, about the sort of helping people in recovery set up their own businesses or ventures or non-for-profit. Now, Red Rose Recovery manages some of the money which is called brick funding and stepping stones. Um, my, the, our role is to support people with their applications to get that. So. So if somebody comes along and says, right, I want to set up an arts and craft group for people in recovery, we'll say fine, uh, and we'll support them in the application process, and they can either apply for £500 or 5000 Now, if somebody comes along that used to be a plasterer or a joiner, and says, Andy, I really want to start my own business now, I'm in recovery, and then it's the same format, but they can apply for a bigger sum of money, up to £5,000. We've been doing this for many years now. Um, now, because of COVID-19, what would not, we've had to change it slightly. What normally happens is I'll meet up a couple of months before, we'll go for a business plan, we'll go for the application form, and then get them to the point where they go for the first interview. We've had to sort of, sort of adapt to circumstances. So now what happens is I'll put a, on a, a Tuesday afternoon a generic um, how to start your own business. We did the first one last week. So it's a PowerPoint presentation. It looks at the application process. 
um, how to market, how to look at finances in that. So anybody can jump on that at any time. Um, and then after that, there'll be separate Zoom meetings to fill out the applications. We've done it once. We've got through one quarter. We've had a couple of people set up their businesses and they're up and running. Um, the next quarter is in two weeks, so I think it might be too late for that. But um, there is one in October. So if there's anybody interested that really wants to go down that route, start, start their own business, um, let me know. But it's also for organisations that want to set up and uh, set up, you know, to, to fund stuff for individuals in recovery. Yeah. Um, oh, and the last bit of my job is to do the like events and stuff. So over the last sort of few years, we've done Pride, the National Recovery Walk. Um, this year, obviously, it's changed slightly. There's no Pride, but the UK Recovery Walk still taking going ahead later on this year, but that's going to be online. Um, so we're involved in that. So we used to have about one event a month. We used to get uh, volunteers in recovery doing like um, certain runs, you know, 10K events where we were stewarding. There's always some, there was always something coming up, but hopefully next year we'll start the ball rolling again. There you go. That's the first question answered. <laughs> wow. Um, I was well. So, what do you most enjoy about it? Uh, pretty much everything from sign of it. I, I, I'll be honest. With you, I love most. I love all, well. Most, I love every aspect of my job. Yeah, and it sounds corny, but it's taken a few years to get here. But yeah, um, I love the variety. I like the autonomy CGL give me to start groups and that. That. You know they're pretty good at saying right okay to run run with a new venture some of the ventures have fallen flat over the years but i love the concept of having an idea and then putting it out there and then there's being an end result to it yeah um create something out of nothing so the adapt you know it, it's recently the last sort of five months we've had to totally look at what we're delivering i i remember when the lockdown came in all our groups were face to face and that were it, it were gone in an instant. So we've had to sort of reinvent ourselves and gradually introduce new ways of working and delivery. Obviously there's a bit of Zoom fatigue with that because all our stuff's on Zoom, but yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. I, love, I love it all, yeah. Excellent, so what do you like the least? What's your least favorite? <laughs> um, Two things, the, the, the sort of discrimination that I experience when we're setting up stuff, that that's irks me, that's, that does sort of like, you have to be professional about it and then move on from it. Um, and I did a, we did this management thing the other day, like what type of worker are you? That You've probably done them before and you tick off your styles of delivery. And my, my, I came out as a creator and a contactor, but I came out lowest score on admin. So that answers your question. <laughs> so everybody knows me. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah, but <laughs> not your favourite. Uh, yeah, yeah, you put me on the spot that is. Like Chris Morgan <laughs> in the signal of the service. What's been your most memorable gig? Right. Um I, it's hard that because we've done this. We've been doing lot, lots of events and things over the years. I'll, one, I would say, in terms of physical mem mem memorable, would be when a few years when we had a cycling group and uh, we spent about six months training, and a group of us service users and we cycled from Morecambe to Blackburn in one day. Um, I think it was 50 miles, but it took months of going out there, riding from Rottenstall to Burnley and back. And we all joined up at Morecambe. So there was there was guys from all over um, the service in the Northwest. It was, it was an absolutely brilliant day. That, that would be a physical challenge. I would say uh, memorable in terms of the music, the bands that we formed. We once performed at Old Trafford at the football ground. That was an experience. We didn't actually play on the pit. We played in the in the perform you know, in the, the suite there. That was a that was a good day out. And then I think really the sort of creative art stuff that we've done, the shows, the pantomimes. Now, when, when I first ventured a pantomime many, many years ago, everybody was taking the mick, right? Um, and other people said, you can never do that in recovery. And we thought, well, why, why can't we? Yeah, and this is the brick team. And if you think about it, pantomimes are sort of like the most difficult piece of theatre to do, but it gives so many skills, it gives people 
the skills to learn lines, to act, stage presence, sing and dance. And it's such a massive journey for people's confidence. So I think that, you know, the sort of performances that we've done and subsequent the plays, the radio plays and the plays we've done on equality and diversity, um, we've delivered them. We ended up delivering them for all the job centres for their staff to educate them on how, you know, not to be judgmental and that. So, um, and I would say the, the sort of creation, I was only part of it, but the, the sort of the, the creative arts companies that have been set up, Stage Fright and Calamity Play has been involved in that process. So having a recovery theatre group. So that's not my achievement. That's just being part of it, you know, because there's some fantastic people that have done that. So, yeah. That's fantastic. What so? Maybe not one of those, but what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you during this role? Because there must be loads. There's a few. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's funny or not, and I don't know if it's in it, but well, right, so every Christmas for the last few years, we've gone round, we do carol singing with Calamity Players from Accrington, yeah? Hello to everybody in Calamity Players. So every year we go round Accrington and we do carol singing, and then we go round Burnley, and we do about five or six care homes. One year we went into this particular care home and they started, uh, some of the residents started taking a liking towards some of our uh, male members uh, of, the, of the group and they were going out and trying to uh, snog um, different people. Like Liam, got, um, somebody took a fancy for Liam Lever as a worker um, and there was a few and we, they had to hold them back and then one lady was chasing me around with my guitar and at the end of it, we all got to the minibus and we were like looking through our pockets and uh, we, we'd had our mobile phones and wallets had disappeared on us. Um, it wasn't deliberate because it was like a, a unit that was like that, so we had to go back and get all our phones and that. So that was a mem memorable one. Um, one more is what we did a pantomime years ago at Clivero and we were rehearsing one afternoon and uh, the load of bricks came through the window. Um, and so we ran out and it's a bunch of school kids and I remember me one of the volunteers called Gareth he shouted out you boys come here like that now if that being in Burnley yeah they would have legged it and told us what to do but they stopped and we didn't know what to do and I'm like so they stopped there and I'm like right what do we do now so we got the names and addresses and told the school so it, I don't know if it's funny but it was memorable <laughs> that's brilliant so, you're a man of many talents, you do the Academy Kitchen, you do the Confidence Building Course, the band, the Pantos, the Drama Clubs, the Social Evening, the list just goes on. So how on earth do you manage your time? How do you manage to do all this different stuff? Um, I think it's just having support in my family and that, yeah. Um, and the support, the CGL being supportive. I mean, my missus doesn't, you know, she might go in the kitchen. I've got an Elvis we've gone practicing for a, for a gig and that, and she's done back an eyelid now. And the kids being in it as well, it's, it's pretty important for me that my kids have been involved in a lot of this stuff. I know I've got two sons and they've both been in sort of performances as well. And also when I go around town and that and being open with them and saying like, this is, who's that dad? And, do you know what I mean? And I think it's important to educate at an early age with stuff and not to judge people. So really, my family and also with CGL being really sort of like letting me come out with some daft ideas and let them run with it. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Andy. I'm going to hand you over to Zush now. Thanks, Nina. Hi, Andy. Hiya. Um, yeah. So, Andy, um, what made you want to work in this area, service? Oh, that's a difficult one. I, I sort of... It's, it's, there's always been something in me that's gone down a sort of a caring profession. I don't know if that sounds a bit corny. So I was in the forces many, many years ago and it wasn't for me. Um, and I was a youth worker and then I was sort of drawn to, you know, like where there's an inequality in that. And then I sort of ended up as a youth worker and a homeless worker. And then I ended up working for ADS. Um, on the criminal justice side in the cells and the prisons and that and it was just a natural pull to this sort of area of work and it would just I think sometimes you don't have a plan do you something with life and it just opportunities or sort of like things just say right this is what you should be doing and the instinct yeah and this is the longest that I've sort of 
I know this is what I want to do, this is where I want to be, and I ain't got any, any other plans to go anywhere else, as long as CG will keep me on, yeah, until I'm 65. I don't know what the retirement age is now. 78, was it? I'm not 68. So there's just something inside that drives me, yeah, and now I've got here, it just, yeah. It does I just mean feel, yeah, I feel this is, um, so what are your likes and dislikes and your favourite things? Um, likes and dislikes. Oof. I like being with my family. I like um, that. That's my priority at the end of the day. Um, I like playing the guitar. I'm not very good at it. Um, I like writing um, plays, but mainly comedy plays. So last night I was doing the uh, the one for Christmas. Don't tell me, boss. We should be watching this. <laughs> um, but yeah. That sort of, and then getting, spreading that idea and then getting people involved. It's fantastic just to have a little idea and then at the end of it, you're performing in like two, three hundred people from, you know, and that sort of, that's what, that's, I love that sort of creativity and sort of, you know, and knowing that it's going to help people's confidence, even though it, they're stepping outside the comfort zone at first. And when somebody says, we've got, yeah, I fancy doing that. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, dislikes. Um, I don't like red tape that's there for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, sort of like bullies, I hate bullies. I hate sort of when people are oppressed and that, you know, people that are sort of like exploited and stuff. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so, have you got any hobbies? Uh, I know you've touched on a few already, but. And is there anything, is there anything that you've had time to do, especially like with the lockdown, you know, that you might not have done before? New hobby? Um, well, we, we started a hobbies club up a few, a while back, and somebody suggested it, and I thought, oh my goodness, how the heck are we going to do an hobbies club? And I'm still struggling with it. But it, when we had the first one, the, 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 some people were coming on with what they were doing, and it, and it sort of like inspired others to bring stuff together. We've still got a lot of work on it to do, but um, I, I bought some boxing mitts <laughs> um, to do some, to work out, to box a size, and um, I did stuff for the kids, like, you know, built a garden shed over the lockdown for me. I'd wanted a shed for his birthday. So I, I, I was always trying new things out and that. Um, so I think lockdown were difficult at first to, find a focus in terms of everything to cut off so I just try to work out every day with some limited dumbbells and that and yeah and what do you consider to be the biggest successes of your role I don't know I think to be honest with me and the people that, that I've had a privilege to meet over the years that does sound corny but you know I've met so many brilliant people you know that have you know that are still there or they've gone on to pastures new um and and seeing people you know that sort of journey that somebody might have been a volunteer um or sorry in service and then becoming a peer mentor and a volunteer and that's now a paid worker that is you know stuff like that so the, the achievements it, it's not i don't know if it's about achievement it's just like you know the the the, the, the formation of different things that happen, like the stage fight, like the calamity players, but that's, like I said before, that's all the people there's, you know, out there, there's, there's hundreds that have been involved, you know, and that have moved on as to, to, to paid stuff as well, and whatever, you know. So it, it's, yeah, you forget as well, you know, what, but, you know, I, I think now, isn't it, it it's, Adapting to now as well, having to really, yeah, and not seeing people. Thanks, Andy. I'll hand you back to Nina. Hey, back to you, Nina. Thanks, Josh. Hey, Andy, again. So, obviously, we're both service user reps. So, um, what is your approach to service user social engagement? Because part of your that's part of your role, isn't it? Yeah. I think first of all, when 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 um, like many people, 
back in March, when, when it all happened, I think quite a few people went into scare mode. Yeah. Um, I remember Rachel Taylor sent us a, an email and there was this target. And in this target was how people react, might react to COVID. So in the middle was scared, frightened, the unknown. And then the outer circle was adapting and then, and then sort of then cycle of change and then later on sort of stop operating effectively. So I think first of all, it was like, right, everything's gone. Yeah, your job's gone, Andy, what can you do? So it was adapting to that, making sure. So I, I wrote an article on mental, how to do with your mental health in terms of isolation and we managed to get that out. And then originally I'm, I was down to do food bank coordination um, and then helping out on other groups, doing outreach and that. But then once we got the anger Zoom, it was like, right, what can be transposed that what we delivered before onto Zoom? So that was, now that's what I'm focusing on mainly, delivering so many sessions a week that people can jump into now. One of the, there are problems with Zoom. One of them is not everybody has access to the internet and that is, that is the difficulty and you've got to add data and that. So I think that's a big gap that we've been looking at. I don't know how to, that, that is a massive area that, you know, because a lot of people are missing out. So, um, and it's putting that variety as well, having confidence building, setting your own business. We've got relaxation classes that are restarting. We've got the coffee morning. The social evening, I think we're nearly at week 20 on that. Um, and then the here and now groups and the confidence building. So it, it's delivering the program that we might have delivered before, but with in a different way. Yeah. Um, it, and I, I think just sort of like getting in contact with people. I know if I haven't seen somebody for a couple of days or haven't been to a meeting, there's something not right there. I'm giving them a phone call and chase people up. Um, and I think that's. Because my experience recently is when COVID happened, there seemed to be a bit of a pattern to it. That there was, yeah, you know, we had the initial isolation. The things gradually got easier. The lockdown restrictions became less, but then the curveball came in and then we went back to, I know in Burnley, local restrictions. And I think in people's head, they thought, right, they were going okay. And, then, and it was like that. And, and that, has, that has affected a lot of people that I know in terms of their mental health. So I think the biggest thing out there at the moment is people, some people are struggling with that, feeling isolated. And it's very, very easy to get into the habit of isolating yourself. And I think if we can provide sort of in our own little way something that people can tap into, and even if they come on the groups and they're not even like showing their face, as long as they know they're there and they're listening, that's all that matters. Um, so I think that's our response because we are restricted. We can't do face to face. I'd love to have a social. I'd love to have a group, and um, we are naturally social individuals. But we have to deal with what we've got at the moment. So yeah, but that's that's a big thing. Not having access to the technology, and then you know who's out there who is isolated, and that there are there are a lot of um, that we can't do. But there's a quite a few people in the recovery community that are setting up their own groups. They're going for walks at weekends and that, aren't they? So should, you know, doing their own stuff. And that's important and trying to connect them with that as well. And, and it's a big shout out to uh, CSI Active Lancashire when they first started. They put that within a week, they put the chit chat group on. And that is amazing because so many people are connecting on that. I mean, I go on in the morning, it takes me 10 minutes to scroll through all the last night's feeds to put some of it on. So there's a lot of organisations there that have adapted very quickly and all the workers, you know, um, to it. And in, to the end of the question is, even though Inspire are delivering different, they're not sure. People, the key workers are accessible. Do you know what I mean? We're just having to work in different ways, really. But, the, but if you are struggling, that, if you are watching this day, get in contact. Don't be isolated. And I said, I'm corny again, but... You know, there are people out there, the service user reps, volunteers, your staff, you know, even if you're not in service and you're struggling, I, I think there'll be a lot of people that have got into a group, you know, bad habits as well, you know, contact inspired, you know, you know, there'll be somebody there that can support you. I'm right. waffling. Waffling. I'm not waffling. Thanks, Andy. We've touched on your biggest successes in your role. What do you think your biggest challenge? Do you think it's the current situation or do you have other challenges that you you find um 
it, yeah, it's this period of uncertainty, I think. I think we, the biggest challenge is still the stigma, all right? Now, many years ago, mental health was a massive thing and it was hidden and it was like sort of, um, you know, discriminated against. And it's become more to the forefront. There's a lot more celebrities out there. I still think that recovery is, is behind that. And I, and, I, and I remember distinctively when, I think we're in was it April or May, and they were doing, you know, the clap for the carers and the clap for the, all the key workers and that. And I, I was seeing all the hard work that was going on out there with all our guys at Inspire. And I think it was like the forgotten sort of like people, do you know what I mean? Um, and, and, I, and I think that's the challenge there is to, you know, to go, you know, it's like a bit of a campaign really is to like, you know, people do judge, but hang on a sec, do, do you really know what, you know, there for the, the grace of God? Um, so saying that, Curly Watts was on TV this morning. I don't know if you saw it on, um, he's in recovery and his wife as well. So they were promoting it. So it's getting better, but it's still big out there as well. And it's institutionalized as well. It is in there, it's, um, that discrimination. And, you know, it, it, it does have to be challenged in that. And I, I, I like to challenge through actions. Yeah, I like to put something calm. I'm not one of these, like, somebody that, that gives it all that, but I'd rather say, like oh, these guys, they're, you know, they went to, to do this event. They're all in recovery. Oh, are they? You know, and people are surprised, you know, at the end of the day, we're all the same. It's just like people like to put labels on people, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they do. So that's the challenge. That's that's the thing that's going to go, COVID or no COVID, that's just going to keep continuing as well. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, I'm going to hand you back to Zush again. Thanks, Nina. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to say I pinched one of your questions. <laughs> I'm not going to answer another one, same as that one. <laughs> oh, you've nicked one of uh, Nina's? No, it's not one of yours. You're all getting the question. Right, right. so a deep breath. <laughs> so, um, what, has, sorry. what has been your response to COVID and the changes to the service user experience? And do you feel that the service users have taken well to the changes overall? I think I've answered some of that in terms of what we're trying to deliver. I think at first, again, we were in that period of like scared. And I think when they came out with some of the changes, like 14 day unsupervised and that, that was, you know, but people, you've got to give people the credit. Yeah. People adapt and that, you know, overall, I think it's been a good response. Yeah. I think people have struggled because they can't just pop in to inspire and that. Yeah, but like I said before, we're, we're, we are open at the end of the phone. Um, and so, it, what was the question? <laughs> I think, yeah, I've actually answered it. And, and I've got to just add as well, uh, for the people at home who are watching this, that Inspire has been amazing, uh, the way they have adapted. Um, yeah, it's about how COVID-19 is affected. Mm, yeah, I see, I see it every day in the office and that. I mean, I do a totally different job really from everybody else and that. So, but, you know, I, I know that I'm at grassroots here and I'm on the flash meetings every day, how much hard work goes in, the work and mo. It's that jigsaw puzzle that everybody fits together, the key workers, what their pressure they're under, getting the lockdown kits out, getting the safe storage out, making sure people are safe, bringing them up, you know, making sure changes in scripts are done you know, the doctors, the nurses, everybody, and they really have. It's been amazing. Yeah. I've seen a lot of tired people as well. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, they have. It's been, been, it's been good in that sense. It's not been good COVID-19, but seeing people respond to it. Yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been a sort of an honor to be part of that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so what's your exit strategy? Um, will the service go back to how it operated before COVID-19? Um, I'm chomping at the bit with certain bits that I want to do, yeah? Obviously, with the cycling and the walking and other stuff. However, however, the sort of stuff like, I'm going to 
keep a lot of things that we're doing already because like for instance the social evening when we were doing them before at Burnley or here we we'd have about 20 people yeah but on with the Facebook live when we don't get kicked off it's I've done the figures I had to do a report this morning of all the sort of events that we've done and over a quarter with all the stuff that we would normally do pre-COVID it was about 900 with all the different groups that we'd run the breakfast clubs and all that um, and I think because we were involved with doing some stuff for Red Rose, um, going on some of their interviews um, with Active Lancashire, and when we did our talent evening, the, last, the first quarter, I think we reached out to 24,000. I mean, that's like, I was like, what? 24,000 people have had sort of not done stuff, but have actually been aware of it. So, sorry. I think I would like to keep a lot of the groups. Um, the confidence building is a good one to keep as well because ironically and it's a catch-22 with confidence if you're going to do a confidence building course you're lacking confidence so you ain't going to turn up to a group and sit there but having it on zoom allows that yeah you can sit there and you don't have to say a word but you're still taking part um so i would say you know a lot of the stuff that we've done i would like to keep in terms of an extra strategy we're at level i mean i know the some of the hospitals in east lance are still on level four we're on i don't know if we're on level three at the moment but until we're down to level two or even level one there isn't going to be that face to face and i don't i think just for my opinion with autumn coming up the school's going back i'm planning an autumn program online till christmas at least yeah um anything after that is you know a bonus but i've got to i've got to think ahead that's my so if that, that's not an exit strategy, that's sort of adapting, you know, and eventually, um, because this could go on for some time, but, you know, there are some benefits that we're going to keep some stuff, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, that, that number is great, by the way. That number is so great. And I think a lot of people, some like coming into the service, but I think a lot of people also, don't, they might not want to admit it, but to find it easier to do it over over technology. Um, yeah. Over, uh, so yeah, that's brilliant. That that is but, that is that many it say. <laughs> no, but it goes back to the problem I mentioned before that even though we're reaching out to so many people, the people some of the people that we really need to meet are the most vulnerable. They don't necessarily have the phones and that, and that's something that needs, you know, because we can offer a whole service, but it means having a phone, it means having access to the, you know, and I don't, that, that's something that needs to be looked at, I reckon, at some point, if we're going to continue down this route, yeah. Something to take to your bosses, Andy. Right, I'll hand you, I'll hand you back to Nina. Thanks, Josh. Um, so just a final thing, um, what message do you have for our service users as a takeaway? um connect don't be isolated yeah please you know it, it it's so easy to get into that i've seen it so many times that people get into that habit of just sort of you know it's a protection it's like but you know it, it, it's you've got to look after your mental health yeah in order to do that you've got to exercise you've got to get out there you've got to try and meet with you know connect with people um but i mean i've, I've Spoken to a lot of people. One of the things, a lot of people, I'm fed up watching daytime telly. Yeah, and that, that, I'm amazed how many people said that. I, my main advice that I, that I said at the start was, you have to have a routine. Yeah, get a routine to your day. Write it down, even if it's little things like I'm going to have the house tidied by five o'clock. I, when I first started, I had a list of jobs by five o'clock. I need to do this. Have a structure and have something to look forward to as well, and be kind to yourself. Yeah. Um, something I, that I read the other day, I can't remember what it was, and I just done it on the confidence building course. So it's that three second rule. Yeah. But you've got the three second rule in your head is right, I'm going to act on this within three seconds. Yeah. So you get up and you go off and you do it. Yeah. And get out of the habit. So we might have created a lot of bad habits during this period. I mean, I know I put bloody stone and half on, and I think that was down to unconscious stress at the time trying to juggle everything, um, but well, I'm going to have to do something about it now. So the message would be don't isolate, Rings, if you, don't be on your own, but ring up people, friends, family, get in contact with us, try and get logged on to some of these groups and that, and get a routine. Look, look forward to some of that, yeah, if you can, if you just want to, yeah. 
not, not Richard and Judy. Well, it's not Richard and Judy anymore, is it? <laughs> Shows I don't watch daytime. I don't think it's any different, I'm just to be honest. I really don't. Loose women. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that, Andy. Thanks, Josh. Um, huh? It's been really lovely to get to know something about not only Andy, the worker, but Andy, the man as well. Thank behind you. Us, shall speak. Um, thanks again, and um, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Yeah. When do I start? Monday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll get a uniform. Yeah, you get pay rise and all. Well, you would if I were in charge. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>